My personal new gaming PC is finally working and in this video I'm going to show you how to set it up. People are always asking me what I put on my own personal system and ultimately I can share all my tips and tricks to make sure that you're getting the best from your system and ultimately having the best PC gaming experience. If you bought yourself a pre-build then your system will probably look something like this. You'll end up in the Windows desktop and you'll be ready to install all of the programs and things that you want on your machine. But dare I say for most of you, you are actually going to need one of these which is a USB flash drive and you have a copy of Windows on this. It could be Windows 10 or in this case Windows 11 and you just need to grab it, insert it into the back of your system, turn it back on or give it a restart. It should automatically load into the Windows bootloader but if it doesn't just mash the delete key. You'll then be greeted with a screen that looks pretty similar to this depending on the motherboard manufacturer that you've gone for. This is a gigabyte board and you'll see at the bottom it says boot sequence. It's then just a case of finding your USB flash drive, moving it to the top of the list, save and exit and then just let it reload into the Windows installer. You can cycle through the buttons to hit install. If you plan on upgrading an existing PC or moving from a laptop to maybe a desktop and you're definitely not going to use the old system, then you don't actually need to buy Windows again. So you can just say, I don't have a product key. And then when you get into the Windows desktop, you can go to troubleshooting and then it can automatically find your product key from your old install and it'll transfer it across to your new machine. Assuming you're not going from say Windows 10 to Windows 11 Pro. It needs to be home to home, pro to pro, or you can probably do pro to home, but then it'll upgrade your home to pro. Got all of that? Agree not to make a nuclear bomb with your copy of Windows. And then here are all of your drives. Just select the one you want, select new, and then follow the on-screen instructions. Now, everyone should be right back at this exact same point. We have a copy of Windows installed, but that's about it. Some things with your system probably work, others probably don't. So of course the way to fix this and get around the problems is to install what's known as the device drivers. And this is why some things will be working at the moment is because Windows actually has some of these baked in. It can sort of work out what's in your gaming PC and say, oh look, I know that. And it'll find some instructions to actually make the things run properly. But of course the problem here is that your copy of Windows is probably quite out of date. And especially with something like a graphics driver, there's gonna be something a lot more modern, a lot newer that's gonna make that component work a whole lot better. So the first thing is gonna be to grab some device drivers for the graphics cards. Here we've got an NVIDIA one, so we need to go to the NVIDIA website. But if you're going for AMD, then of course you want to go to the AMD website. Do be very careful though, as I've seen loads of scams and horrible like free shareware sites where they say they're giving you the device drivers but they're actually either not or they're bundling something horrible along with it. Always get your graphics card drivers from the official AMD, Intel or NVIDIA site. Unless you're watching this 20 years in the future and there's a new company called Centric that makes graphics cards. I must be pretty rich. And I'll do the best press conferences. I'll say things like, it just works. And then you'll find that it does work, but you get half the FPS. <coughs> Ray tracing. While it's doing that, we can also grab the drivers for everything else. And the best way to do this is to go to your motherboard manufacturer's website. We find the product page, we go over to support, and then here we have all of the downloads to make everything work its best. So usually I'll just grab the audio drivers, LAN, chipset, you do also have all of these utilities that can actually download and install these things for you. They can control the RGB lighting. What else can they do? Fast boot, game boost, DRM fix tool. As you can tell, a lot of these aren't exactly essential. But I'll grab the RGB fusion while I'm here as well, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Surely you've installed a program before. Do I need to take you through this step by step? No. Having said that though, it is definitely worth noting that when you get the choice between just the driver and GeForce Experience as well, I would always go for the GeForce Experience one as well you do need to create an account which is quite annoying. This is what allows you to overclock your system, tune all of your game settings automatically without you knowing what they are, and of course to actually capture and save all of your like game replays and any highlights that you want from in-game footage. It makes it a lot easier, it's very light, it's very easy to use, and I think you'd be a fool not to use it. Hi NVIDIA, can you transfer me that $1 million now please? I have mentioned all of the GeForce Experience things that you told me to say. What's that? You didn't like the 20 series joke. I now owe you a million dollars? But Jensen, please! All jokes aside, AMD also has some software that is very similar to GeForce Experience. This is all sort of baked into the software anyway. You don't really get a choice between installing it and not. 
At this stage, your computer is pretty much ready to use. You can throw whatever you want on it, if it's games, if it's utilities, applications, and you won't really have any problems. However, you aren't going to get the best performance at the moment. This problem is twofold. Firstly, noise levels. And in terms of performance, there are actually a couple of tweaks we can make really quickly and easily in the BIOS. They'll actually make it better for free with pretty much no effort. You usually have something that's known as easy mode and then you have advanced mode. Easy has pretty much all the stuff you're probably gonna need in here. XMP is what we wanna do first. This is enabling the XMP or extreme memory profile that's actually baked into your memory. So at the moment, because this is DDR5, it's running at a very slow 4800 megahertz, but we can actually get this to go faster simply by pressing this button. And then this will set it to DDR5 5200. The next thing I will do is enable something called resize bar support. And this is actually quite a recent feature. It essentially allows your graphics card to talk to your memory properly without having to do it in smaller segments. It will depend on the exact title, but this can actually give you a fair old chunk of FPS. In some cases, it could even be about 10% more just from one BIOS setting. So we can type in bar, no bar, resize, no, okay, that's not very helpful, let's try 4G. Okay, now this is a little bit annoying from Gigabyte that it's not clearer, but essentially above 4G decoding is resizable bar, so you want to turn this on, then underneath it will then come up with the option for resizable bar support and you can set this to be enabled. Gigabyte, if you're watching, and I know you probably are, if you can put this somewhere in that easy menu, I think a lot of people would appreciate that. Once again, let's do our save and exit and open up what's called smart fan or something very similar depending on the exact name of your motherboard. We will have to create a custom curve then and I'll make the PC nice and quiet when it's not really doing any work but then make it ramp up when things start to get hot. So we get a nice balance between noise levels and acoustics. We can then save this to all of the fans and then immediately our system has actually got a whole lot quieter. The loudest bit is now the pump. It's then just a case of restarting our PC once more, but this time we're actually gonna let it load into Windows and we can start adding some apps, some software, some tuning, some utilities. But before we get to that really fun stuff, it's time for a quick word from this video sponsor. Today, I'm feeling very productive and motivated, and it's all thanks to a new app. It's called Blinkist, and it's the sponsor of today's video. Blinkist is an awesome way of absorbing the best bits of thousands of books and podcasts, but without spending hours reading or listening. Blinkist condenses the juiciest bits of information from every book into bite-sized blinks that you can listen to at home, at work, in the car, just about anywhere. It is perfect for anyone with a really busy schedule, or those that just don't have time to read. Now you can take in the best of literature in quite literally minutes. I've just finished listening to Do What Matters Most, a fascinating read, and one that's really made me think about how to prioritise my time better. You can read Blinks on the train or listen in the car, as every Blink is professionally narrated. Alexander Hamilton by Rob Chernow, for instance, Becoming by Michelle Obama, The Barefoot Investor by Scott Pape. So if you're constantly feeling like a really busy bee, but you don't want to miss out on the joyous world of reading, then give Blinkist a go today. Use my link in the description below to not only get yourself a seven day completely free trial, but you also get 25% off a premium membership. Welcome back, and my first hot tip I always do is go and press Control, Shift and Escape to bring up the Task Manager, go over to Options and select this thing called Always on Top. This is probably the best tip I can possibly give you that will quite literally change your gaming career because every time a game crashes, and you can't actually get into the desktop and you have to sort of hard reset it no longer because this will actually appear over your game and you can just exit the task like that. Something that is probably incredibly boring to a lot of people but is actually really important is to give yourself a good folder structure. If you're building a gaming PC, I would wholeheartedly advise actually creating a folder for game installs because believe you me, it is really annoying having Xbox, Steam, Ubisoft, EA Play or whatever it's called now GOG, all installing games in all of these different places. So if you create this little folder and then you have all of your different applications that you save your games here, it is so much easier to actually keep track of everything. And if you're low on storage, you can see exactly what's causing the problem. The next thing I will do is install Chrome because let's be honest, Microsoft Edge 
isn't really what we want. Sorry to any Firefox fans out there. Obviously grab whatever browser floats your boat. Before we move on, I probably should suggest that you actually go into your display settings and just double check that the resolution and the refresh rate of your screen is actually what it's supposed to be. It's then time to grab some monitoring software and there's a couple of things I always recommend. Core Temp is one of them because it's very lightweight and simple and pretty much anyone can benefit from it really. But something that is really friggin' annoying and it's been doing this for years and I assume it's to do with money is that you have to look very carefully when you install it because one of the things is build your kingdom with good game empire. They've just snuck that in there and you get some game on your PC that you don't want. And just like magic, it will come up here with all of the statistics for all of your individual cores. It will tell you the frequencies, you've got extra tools, you can set this to be always on top as well. We've got plugins. The other tool that I want to install on my system is called Hardware Info. This is definitely a little bit more intense, if you like, than Core Temp because it shows you pretty much everything and anything that you have a sensor for in your system, which isn't necessarily required. But if you're going to be installing a water-cooled loop like I am, or really like tuning to get the best performance, then it is definitely a great option. I've learnt my lesson the hard way, remember. I ended up cooking an RTX 2080 Ti because one of the sensors on the memory, well, one of the memory modules was getting too hot and I couldn't see the sensor temperature because I didn't have hardware info, basically. And that was majorly sad. So that's what I use for monitoring, but when it comes to actually doing some overclocking, all of the CPU stuff I will always do in the BIOS because I think that's definitely the best way. But for the graphics cards, you're gonna need something a bit more, well, software-y. And I use EVGA Precision X. Now to be clear, this probably does technically void your warranty. I'm not sure how they're gonna know that you've been tweaking these things and it might vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. You get all of these sliders here and you can essentially just boost your GPU a little bit higher than its rated clock speeds. You have to do this slowly. There's a whole video I've done to show you how to do this, by the way. You can find that video in the top right corner of your screen. That makes it very easy to follow along at home. Ah, oh, question that you guys always have and I don't think I've ever really answered antivirus is it worth installing like a free or paid antivirus software for your windows machine i'm not an expert on antivirus but maybe that's just because i've never really used one i mean ever since windows 10 you've got windows defender baked straight into this in my opinion for myself i don't think it's worth me spending any money on antivirus i'm sure there are features out there that some people would think are worth buying and obviously programs are going to vary in different performance but for me windows defender has always been fine now let's talk about the pretty bits actually tuning our pc to make it look more visually appealing and the the thing that is a little bit annoying is that you're going to need different programs for different parts of your computer. If it's all Corsair or all Razer, let's say, then yes, you can control it all from like one bit of software. And this is exactly one of the reasons why for my finished PC, there's going to be very little software required. It's just going to be the Corsair stuff for, I think, just the memory, actually, and then the Gigabyte RGB Fusion software for the rest of the stuff, because these be quite fans that look pretty pretty. They connect to a generic addressable RGB header on the board itself. So let's install RGB Fusion, which, to speak frankly, is not the best RGB software out there. I mean, none of them are great. I would say that IQ is probably the best, but I mean, it still has its flaws, right? It's not the most polished bit of kit out there. It doesn't always work. But RGB fusion in the past has caused me some problems. Things like only one of the headers working properly, all of the lights being stuck on orange, incompatibilities with certain games. So do be aware that it might come a time that you will have to uninstall this if certain games aren't working properly. Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, so now our Be Quiet fans are orange. So that has worked. But what if I want it to be rainbow? Yes, there we go. We have some RGB, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Bang in. I just wish they'd add more effects and things. I mean, you've got Wave 1 and Wave 2, and that's about it. The other one I need is Corsair IQ. Then we can navigate over to our Dominator Platinum RGB. And definitely my favourite effect ever is called Stack. Look what it starts doing, look. It's like Tetris. It's so cute. But anyway, that is the most important thing out of the way, the RGB lighting. Now let's talk to like the more mundane stuff, like actually getting the games on this thing. And I'm sure many of you have done this many, many times before, but obviously you're going to need Steam, Origin, Xbox. I mean, I am a big fan of Xbox Game Pass. Basically, whatever game you want to play, you need to install the installer. 
in order to install it. If you are brand new to PC gaming though, or you've been away for a while, then the way you actually do want to chat with your friends is called Discord. It's essentially the most up-to-date way of doing the equivalent of like Xbox party chat, but on PC really. So you don't need to worry about having all of your different like game things open all at the same time. If your friend is offline, then you know they actually are offline, unless they're trying to hide from you. What have you done to them? What have you said to Colin? Shout outs to all the Collins out there watching this video and are now very freaked out. We know you've been hurt and we're sorry. You'll hopefully recall that earlier we talked about game install locations. In Steam, you can go to Settings, Downloads, Steam Library Folders, navigate to the Drive, Game Installs, and select. And then now, when we install Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it will come up with D, Game installs, agree, and bang. You're now so close to actually gaming on your brand new computer. Hang on a minute, this is turning into a guide. This was supposed to be about me. Oh, look at that, look, we've got another conflict. GeForce RTX is having a little rave up. I've been using this for 60 minutes and I've already managed to break the RGB. But I think the system looks pretty cool. I love the pink and blue. While that's downloading, I will grab myself a copy of WhatsApp for the desktop. Stay in contact with all of your friends that aren't on PC. The ones that will never be in the Elite unless they buy a PC. Because this is going to be my video editing rig, I need to grab myself a copy of Resolve 17. I do highly recommend this. I was using the free version for years and then I decided to grab the Studio one more recently because you have GPU acceleration. For all of my thumbnails, I use a combination of Adobe Lightroom and then GIMP. And then the final thing before we can actually get gaming is to go and type startup into the start menu. And then you can see all of the things that will actually open up when you launch your computer. Not all of them need to come up in my opinion, like Microsoft Teams, no. Oh, and to answer one other question that loads of people always have, how do I get those cool animated wallpapers? Well, I use something called Wallpaper Engine. It is on Steam, I think it costs like two or three quid, and then you're essentially using other people's wallpapers that they make for free. But then you can just browse through wallpapers that you like, Click one and then you have an animated wallpaper. It really is that simple. And I think with that, we are finally ready to actually open up a game, make sure that it's not gonna instantly crash and enjoy our gaming PC. You've got that new hardware smell now. That's actually quite nice. If you press Alt and Z, you can actually get a performance tab up that will show you your frame rate and things like that. It's Alt R actually, there you go. And we are now playing on the new PC-centric personal rig at around about 108 FPS at 4K. That is not too bad. Let me know what you thought of this video. What do you do differently to your system? What have I missed? Are there any like tips and tricks do you have to actually get a better PC gaming experience, make your computer even better? And of course, as always, if you do want to check out anything featured in this video, including some of my favorite peripherals, monitors, all of that good stuff, you can find that link down below with my Amazon affiliate links. But thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Smash the like button, get yourself subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one.